Hi folks, welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack Mach 2. A single player. A single player. Doing single player things in a single player world. Skipping single player instructions. Getting single. Okay, I'm done right now. This category is Hollywood has stars on the sidewalks and in the gutter. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. Say, um, I, I hope you don't take this stuff in our things that get stepped on episode too personally. I mean, for all I know, things you that be get a corporate stepped lackey. On, huh? Or maybe you feel an affinity with dog poo. Or maybe you just feel like people walk all over you all the time. Because he or she was the first person to get a star on the Walk of Fame, whom has Hollywood been walking all over longer than anyone else? Shelley Winters, Joanne Woodward, Hume Cronin, or Humphrey Bogart? That's probably Bogart. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. If it weren't for you. Nope. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Woodward's star was the first one placed on the walk in 1960, and in honor of her wonderful work, she's now covered in gum, cigarette butts, and hawkers. The category's gonna be, I majored in kvetching, and this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Oh, All right, it. give me your best shot. What class might require you to see the movie Ants? Myrmecology 101, Seismology 101, Cytology 101, or Anthology 101? That really makes sense. Pharmacology is the science of ants. Yes, ants. The best Woody Allen, Sylvester Stallone action movie since Tango and Cash. I don't know. Yeah, you can just keep thinking. I'm calling this one. Somebody took a big dipper on my front lawn. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Sorry, Hey, that you know me. that practical joke where you put the dog poo in a brown bag and then set it on fire? And some guy wants to put out the fire, so he steps on it? <laughs> Say there's a burning bag of poo from the dog star on your doorstep. What celestial body should clean your shoes? Sirius, Polaris, Proxima Centauri, or Barnard star? Yeah, Sirius. Dog star is serious. Well, at least it wasn't Taurus leaving a bag of poo on your steps. Believe me, you do not want to have to step in a big flaming bag of bull. Yeah, that that would be uh, a bit messier. This yes. one's called No Shirt, No Shoes, No Running Bra, and this one's worth three thousand dollars. Put it in gear, cause here we go. Because she is famous for running barefoot, which runner would have to tattoo a swish on her foot to get endorsement money from Nike? Rosie Ruiz, Zola Bud, Mary Decker, or Jackie Joyner Kersey? You know, I don't recall Joyner Kersey going barefoot. Zola Bud is a South African runner who ran for Britain. Hey, and guess what? She always ran barefoot. And if you ask me, running barefoot is really very selfish of Zola Bud. I mean, just think of how many third world children she put out of work. I hope you've taken your medication because uh, we're uh. heading straight for a coinky dink. All right, here's the deal with the sure show. Blame I'm her. Show well, all right then, Speedy. Let's get a move on. This is known dink as is known as playing footsie. Got it? Good. Let's go. Drug smuggler and donkey and horse hybrid. What unites you? Only think of two In mules. Right tires and flick up the jam. And one of them's a shoe. Much like the pump. One dollar and other pearl as blank. Buck. Apartment in England and soda without the fizz. It's flat. Barely a bikini bottom and braided leather whip. Fong. But floss is also appropriate for at least the first one. To kick out and army recruit camp. Trains, ins, and a candidate runs on her blank. Platform.
Okay, heads up for the bonus. Tell me what all of the correct answers have in common. Are they all... Brands of gum! Sexy dances! No. Famous hiking trails! Types of shoes! Yep. It's all yours. And chances are you won't find any of them near Zola Bud's feet. Excellent work. A well, score. The only thing that could top that is a big. I'm bonus. pretty sure she wears hey, shoes one, for other things. Too. I pat you on the back, but I don't want to catch anything. Let's move on. And yeah, neither do I. Stop. Oh, wait, I that before. Six. Coming at you. Why does the fat kid always get picked on? You get this one, you pocket two thousand bucks. See if you can wrap your skull around this. If your whipping boy has the same build as whipping cream, how much of his body is composed of fat? 2%, 10.5%, 30%, or 70%? Quite a bit. Whipping cream is generally between 30 and 36% fat. But that doesn't mean I'm not lovable and capable. In fact, you'll, you'll all be working for whipping cream someday. You wait and see. Is that like working for the weekend? Seven. Maybe. Well, next, Sod gets laid a lot. You get it right, you get 2K. Heads up, here it comes. If you oh, step does. the steps, which country should complain that you ignored the keep off the grass sign? Argentina, Kenya, Spain, or Russia? The steps are these huge tracts of grassland in Southeast Europe and Western Asia. That covers a big chunk of Russia. Yep. And if you act fast, you can buy the steps on the Russian black market for just 17 rubles and a couple of Pokemon cards. Yeah, I have the Pokemon cards. Eight. Here's a little something okay, I call I Join Satan's Army. Be a middle manager. I'm gonna make this one a thousand bucks. All right, listen up. We're gonna. Well, hello. Listen up, Schmitty. We got a big meeting today. All right, set up the overhead. I need 347 copies of this memo on my desk in oh, 10 minutes. I'll take some coffee, two sweet and lows, no cream. Call my wife and tell her I'll be late for dinner. And for God's sakes, don't forget to pick up my kids after school. Well, uh, okay. Um, I didn't hear a thing he said. How does he know this coffee? One packet of Sweet and Low with skim milk, one packet of Sweet and Low no cream, two packets of Sweet and Low no cream, or two packets of equal with cream. Uh... I said two packets of Sweet and Low no cream. Ow! Uh, see, I just gotta learn to remember. Coffee, no cream, powdered sugar donuts, and the wife likes to do it with the lights on. Last well, one sounds like a good. useful bit this of information. This or dat. The category for this dis or dat is I am stuck on shoes because shoes are stuck on me. Okay, I'm going to read. I see you got this thing down. I'm going to put you 30 uh. seconds on the clock, all right? Riptide Rush. Go. Watermelon Wave. Strawberry Splash. Whitewater Splash. Lightning Lemonade. Night Thunder. One more. Twisted Tornado. That's the way you do it. Take some of this. Yeah, revel in it, my friend, because that might be the last Kinda of, of easy, really. the game. And I don't even drink Gatorade much. The category is Stepping in sheep droppings. Get this one right, you get a grand. Ew. Okay, how about this? Do you remember that copy guy from Saturday Night Live who was always saying, making copies? I only vaguely <laughs> do, yeah, I guess yes. you gotta find some way to amuse yourself when you're at the bottom of the corporate food chain. Anywho, say the copy guy worked at a biomedical company. It could happen. If employees there made genetic copies of Scotland's famous cloned sheep, what would the copy guy say? Printing pallies, cloning callies, dipping dallies, or making mollies. Dipping dallies. That Scottish sheep who was created Almost in the cloning sounds experiment like is named dots. Dolly. Now I want Dr. dipping dots. Dr. Rama, Dr. Roo, Kinda. dipping dallies, in the lab, in the... Shut up. Yeah. Eleven. This category is cheese in the treads. Let's see what you'll do for a thousand bucks. Let's see how you handle this one. Because he was the first person to take a step on the moon, who might have secretly taught Michael Jackson the moonwalk? John Glenn, Alan Shepard, Buzz Aldrin, or Neil Armstrong? Oh man, it's grammar school all over again. 
For the curious, here's the right answer. Neil's I thought the he man. was the second yeah, one sure, now. He's this big historical figure now, but I liked him better when he was a young pilot, taking to the skies with his brothers Tito and Jermaine. I always, for some reason, I always thought he was the second one down. The category's oh, gonna wow. be the end justifies the meanie. One thousand bucks if you get it. You know, one of the keys to this business of comedy, as I like to call it, is to be funny without stepping on too many toes. If I literally step all over someone's toes, which bones might I break? Phalanges, occipitals, carpals, or tarsals? Well... Broken finger and toe bones would be broken phalanges. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that would be kind of funny. In whose and world? Oh, wait, I'm calling this one. Your Sasquatch world. spotted at local Payless Shoe Source. How does $2,000 sound? Flex those fingers, here it comes. Which shoe would Bigfoot have the hardest time squeezing into? A European size 13, a Japanese size 13, a United Kingdom size 13, or an American size 13? Yeah, the European sizes are the smallest, aren't they? Those Europeans use a little something known as the metric system. Maybe you've heard of it? Anyhow, a size 13 European would be absolutely tiny. Bigfoot no want pumps hurts Bigfoot. Bigfoot want nice cushiony tennis shoe made in sweatshop. Grr. Georgie? Two sweatshop jokes Tales so far. Tales of a socially climbing groupie. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. Uh, remember the 60s? Remember all that groovy music? See, I don't, because I enjoyed the 60s a bit too much. Please help me. Who's not your stepping stone? John Lennon of the Beatles, Peter Noon of Herman's Hermits, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees, or Roger Daltrey of the Who? I seem to remember that being a monkey song. The Monkees sing, I'm not your stepping stone, which goes something like, I'm not your stepping stone. No, I'm not your stepping stone. Actually, Davy Jones would make a better stepping stone than Mickey. He's much smaller, you see. Much more flexible if I remember those episodes of the show, right? Oh well. Welcome. Oh well, someone's been attacked before. Let's see how much many you times. Learned. Here's your clue. Seven ways to step on things. I'd like, like 50 to dedicate ways this to leave your attack lover. to all the little people who helped me on my way to the top. Hawkeye's TV show? <clears throat> Vegetables. Hmm. Percussion and dance stomp. Say this to sled dogs. Candy bar. Ah, darn it. Fell from that one. Postage stamp. Oh, can't believe I fell for the near answer. It's crush. A sink by belief. Isn't that REM? Wanted their orange crush. Great job, my friend. You're like some kind of maniac. Let's take a look at your final score. There it is. Wow, that was an exciting game. That was a real thrill. You were the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left. <coughs> now look to your right. Now repeat after me. You don't know Jack. Well, not a high score inducing episode. But an episode nonetheless. Take care, folks. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you back next time. For more. Hey, listen to this. It's a recording from the As always, Mars. enjoy the commercials. Hey, keep it down. I'm watching a game over here. Women, dude. You can't live with them. You can't have sex without them. Yeah! <laughs> Knees. They bend. You gotta love knees. I have two of them. And so should you. Knees.
Brought to you by the Knee Council. Psst, hey, listen to this. It's a recording from the planet Venus. Oh my god, I'm having hot flashes again. Do these pants make my butt look big? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go shopping. Everybody in clown shoes. And now, the St. Joseph's Historically Inaccurate Boys Choir. Mm. Oh, Genghis Khan was a merry old man, and a very hairy man was he. He invaded Alaska from the north and taught penguins how to speak Chinese. Oh, after the battle, he was quite hungry, so he went to a KFC, where he ordered coleslaw, mashed potatoes, and chicken de rotisserie. No spanking the monkey during the season, squirt! How many times did I hear that? Hi, I'm Hawks quarterback, Rusty Grew, and I'd like to tell you doing it with yourself is okay. It's easy, fun, and you don't need any special shoes. It's the best thing I know for the pregame jitters. Cool and in control, Rusty Grew throws for over 400 yards! Treat yourself right. Masturbate before practices and games, and you'll be a winner, too. <laughs> I remember when Karen had just given birth to Emily. She was our third baby in four years, and I knew the responsibility was going to be immense. That's when I decided to visit National American Bank and Trust. I had problems, and they offered solutions. You see, my friend Larry works there as a janitor, and he loaned me 50 bucks so I could buy a one-way bus ticket to Daytona and get a fake driver's license. Suddenly, my responsibilities vanished, and I was able to go back to visiting strip clubs. Thanks, National American. Here at Wackofson & Snurm, we're working for you. We understand that service is what creates customer loyalty, and we're willing to stand on our heads to keep you coming back. In fact, we'll stand on our heads, then do cartwheels. We'll juggle. We'll ride unicycles. We'll ride unicycles while twirling plates on the ends of sticks. Anything to show you that you're number one. We'll wear funny hats. We'll cover ourselves in your choice of delicious ice cream toppings and light our hair on fire. We'll hire you a band. We'll repaint your house. We'll introduce you to Mr. Robert De Niro. We'll have attractive young people of your sexual preference and feed you grapes and fan you. Wackerson and Snurm, totally committed to serving you. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir can take you to the future. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> It, uh, doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but just wait a moment. Okay, now look at the clock. <gasps> oh, my God, it's a miracle. I'm living two seconds in the future. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir. This stuff really works. Wait, how will I survive here in this crazy future? With my simple old-fashioned ways, I'll be killed. Wow. <laughs>